Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. Could we also you could we also call this equation transcendental? Anyways, so we have 256 to the power x equals 1 over x. And we're going to be solving for x values. And the reason why I call this equation standard is because we have an exponential function on the left hand side, which is 256 to the power x. And on the right hand side, we have a rational function. So there are different kinds of functions. And to be able to solve this equation, we have to use special methods. All right, I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So this, this is going to turn into x times 200, not 26, 256 to the power x equals 1. Nice. So this kind of makes sense because we want to collect all the x terms on one side and the constants on the other side. The next thing we're going to do is use e as a base because e is Euler's number and Euler is amazing. Obviously, that's not the only reason, but that's probably a good excuse, right? So we're going to go ahead and do this. Notice that we can write e to the power ln t as t or vice versa. From here, we can basically change 256 into e to the power ln 256. Nice. How do we use it? Plug it in x times e to the power ln 256, and then we need to raise it to the power x, and that equals 1. Make sense? We just used substitution. Okay. Now, this gives us something nice after a little bit of manipulation. x times, now here we multiply the exponents, so that gives us e to the power x times ln 256 equals 1. So far, so good. Are you still with me? Now, Here's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to look at the exponent. What is the exponent? x times ln 256. But we only have x here. We don't have ln 256. And why do we need that? Here's the thing. We want something like this, t e to the t, so that when we apply Lambert's w function, we can get a t as an output. Get the idea? So for that purpose, and by the way, Lambert's W function could be defined as the inverse of the function t e to the t. So if you call this f of t, then Lambert's W would be f inverse. Okay. Under certain conditions, of course, there are different branches, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and use or get our t because we have e to the t. This is our t here. Okay. That's my t. And I do, oops, I should probably connect it to this one, right? Because that's a that's the base. So we need to multiply both sides by ln 256. And of course, we have to multiply both sides. Did I say both sides? I hope I did. So this is what we get. We had 1, 1 times ln 256 is ln 256. Great. Now we're going to apply... Lambert's W function, but we don't have room for that. So what do we do? We just move this and then also move this separately, <laughs> make some room. And now we can go ahead and, you know, just W both sides, right? And oops, I probably need to rewrite this equal sign. And then I'll put a W here as well. And now when you apply W on the left hand side, because this is t times e to the t, the output would be just t, which means x times ln 256. And that is equal to something else. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this until we simplify it. And then once we simplify, we can come back here, plug it in, and then go from there. Make sense? Okay. So here's what I'm saying. Let's simplify this so we don't have to write it every single time. How do I simplify this? I need to turn it into something like this, t e to the t. Remember? That's the secret sauce. So to be able to do that, we're going to use powers because powers are powerful, right? Pun intended. And here we can basically, for example, 256, I can write it as 2 to the 8th power, correct? And that gives me W8 ln 2. Is this going to turn into something T to the T? No, not really. First of all, these numbers have to be the same. 
they're different. Okay, so it's not gonna work. If you use 16 squared, you're gonna get W of 2 ln 16. Uh oh, it's not gonna work because these numbers are again different. How can they be the same? Well, 256, if it can be written as 2 to the eighth, then we can kind of write this as 2 to the power 2 times 4, and then that can be written as 2 to the power 2 to the power 4, and that is 4 to the power 4. Nice. That's another secret sauce. We have a lot of sauces. Now, we're going to go ahead and write 256 as 4 to the 4 power, and then write it as 4 times ln 4. Okay, now these numbers are equal so what? What do you do next? Okay, we're going to do a little bit of focus focus mathematics here, and that is going to be writing this as ln 4 times, we're going to replace 4 with e to the power ln 4. Because we're always trying to get, remember this, t e to the t. Whatever your t is, it could be coffee too, but I like t better. So this time my t is ln 4. So when you apply Lambert's w to this, you're going to get ln 4. Beautiful. So what we're looking for? we were looking for is ln4. Let's go back here and just write down ln4. Isn't that cool? So we didn't have to write all these every time. Okay, that's a lot of economy. Let's go ahead and clean up this area a little bit because we already got the answer, who cares, right? Now we're gonna take it from here. To be able to simplify this, what are we supposed to do? Use logarithms. Of course, we can go ahead and divide both sides by ln256, right? and then try to simplify as much as possible. Obviously, we know that 256 is what? Four to the fourth power. So now we can go ahead and move this to the front. There's a property, right? P property <laughs> for ln4, I just couldn't say it. And then uh, we can get rid of ln4 and end up with x equals one fourth. How nice, right? x equals one fourth is a solution. Million dollar question, is that the only solution? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at another method, okay, which we can hopefully use. Second method, in other words, second method. Okay, what do we have? We have 256 to the power x equals 1 over x. I know uh, most of you probably thought about this, and I wanted to save it for second method because save the best for last, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the power, are you ready? 1 over x. And you're like, why? Because, first of all, this is good on the right-hand side because I kind of like t to the t. Beautiful. And on the left-hand side, they cancel out. How good can that get, right? Okay, what else can you ask for? So now we have the following. 1 over x to the power 1 over x equals 256, which is 4 to the fourth. To keep a long story very short, 1 over x equals 4, correspondence 1 to 1, x equals one fourth. And guess what? This is the only solution. As far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.